it's my pleasure this morning to update you on Geolab on behalf of my colleagues here to my right. Um, I suppose Geolab, it's fair to say, is a bit more focused uh, in its, its aims and ambitions. Um, and I'll start off by, I suppose, just outlining what they are. In the first instance, to deliver teaching and learning resources for uh, geoscience programs, for, particularly in the areas of optical um, uh, microscopy and petrology. That's the core of what we're trying to do here. And to do that in a technology-enhanced uh, learning environment. So I hopefully uh, generate a step change in how we teach petrology and microscopy uh, to our geoscience students. In addition, and that third point which is key, access high quality digital rock thin sections and in the first instance I suppose build up a repository of high quality digital uh, images of uh, quality thin sections and then from that allow us to generate uh, teaching and learning resources uh, for practitioners uh, in the uh, main geoscience, all the geoscience uh, units here in Ireland. So work done to date, um, the, I, I'll quickly run through this. This is uh, following on pretty much from the structure of our work package. Work packages one, two, and three were very much focused on acquiring the material, quality thin section material. We reached out to all our colleagues in the, in the geoscience departments here in Ireland and they provided that material very, very uh, smartly, I have to say, and we were able to then digitize that. We have 67 uh, image samples, which is impressive just from the Irish material, okay? Um, and a number of those, a significant number, well, not a significant number, but about, I think it's about 30 of those came from uh, the TCD collection. So let me just flag that TCD already had this digital repository in place. They have amalgamated their collection with ours, which is fantastic. Um, we've updated teaching and ongoing, uh, up, there's ongoing updating of teaching resources in our Geolab website, um, and the lads will talk a little bit more about that later on. And I suppose finally we've implemented, uh, and this is the, what we're calling in broad terms the implementation phase, and that pretty much kicked off from January of this year. We've uh, taken that virtual microscope as a resource and uh, integrated it into uh, a number of our modules. Now, I think it's fair to say, it, when you look at the number of modules that this is now, uh, in very real terms, embedded uh, in the teaching protocol, uh, it's, it's quite impressive. Bear in mind that pre-Geolab, TCD were the only institution who were using the virtual microscope, and I think we, there were, if I'm right, about two modules, I think, that were involved. So we've gone from two to this impressive list here. You'll notice they range from first-year modules. For instance, UCD have a, a first-year module there right through to fourth-year, final-year modules. So that's, to me, a very impressive uh, and very tangible evidence of the level of engagement and um, touches on sustainability um, as well uh, that we're dealing with. So we're going to look through a couple of case studies, um, and Emma's going to kick us off with that, just to give you a flavor of the type of thing uh, that we're doing with this. OK, yes, yeah, so in the next few slides, I'm going to run through a few examples of the way that the various geolab um, institutes are using the virtual microscope. And these, these exercises are being identified and shared between the institutes at the moment so to, to make a better working tool. So. The, one of the key advantages of the virtual microscope is that we can view a sample in both plane and cross-polarized light, as you see here, which is exactly what you would do with a physical microscope. So here, a sample of a metamorphic rock from the Trinity collection is used at Cork, where students are asked to describe the fabric of the rock. And you can identify this in the cross-polarized image at the bottom by the alignment of these brightly colored minerals. The virtual microscope also allows you to rotate pre-selected areas of the sample, again, as you would do with a real physical microscope. And this is used in this example um, from UCD, where the extinction angle of plagioclase is dependent on its chemical composition. But to use this to calculate chemical composition, you need to have a crystal at the right orientation. So by using the, the virtual microscope, we can direct students to a specific area of the sample that we've pre-selected in order to make those measurements. And this makes it easier to identify student errors and provide useful feedback. Yeah. OK. Um, another use of the virtual microscope is that we, it, you can use it to make measurements of lengths and angles on thin sections. This is an example of a crinoidal limestone. This is actually from the UK collection, so we have access to samples beyond the Irish Geolab selection. 
Um, and here students are asked to, to make descriptions of the mineralogy and class size and various features of the thin section, but also to measure the fossils and then suggest a developmental, sorry, a depositional environment. One of the key values of the, the virtual microscope is this ability to direct students to a specific area of the sample. And this is something we can't do so well in the lab with a physical microscope, where students each have their own thin section. Um, this is an example from Galway, where students are directed to this olivine crystal and asked to describe its various features, but also to, to look at the alteration of the, the mineral at the edge, this, where this green mineral is replacing at the edge and along fractures. And exercises like this are very useful because students get quite bogged down in alteration features and minor features in rocks. And you, by using exercises like this, we can explain the, the relevance or otherwise of the alteration. Um, the virtual microscope can be integrated with our, our teaching and learning environments at Trinity. This is Blackboard. This is a mantle peridotite rock that I use in my teaching. This is a very rare sample. We don't have enough thin sections to give one to each of our students, so the virtual microscope allows us to use this sample in teaching where otherwise we wouldn't be able to. Um, in this example, students are directed to this brown mineral, which is spinel, and it's reacting to this white mineral, well, clear mineral around the edge, which is plagioclase. And then through Blackboard, they answer some multiple choice and short answer questions to discuss the, the position of this the formation of this rock in the mantle. Um, and so by integrating this thermodynamic and the, the visual petrology, we get students to think more about the link between petrology and therm thermodynamics of the rocks. So that example was a rare thin section. This, in this example, we use a sample where that students have already described in the lab. So they've seen this in the lab, and then in a post-lab exercise, they're given chemical data for two mixing end member magmas, a basalt and, an and, and a dacite, and these mix to form a hybrid magma. And so they perform some calculations, answer some questions on blackboard, and relate these to these disequilibrium textures that we see in the rock. And exercises like this encourage students to investigate and interpret the rocks more than simply describe them. Um, so we find the virtual microscope works very well when it's integrated with lab exercises. This is a feedback and assessment table from Galway. And the first nine exercises are lab-based, and the last five are based on the virtual microscope. And you can see that the virtual microscope is very good for tackling specific features, cleavage and color, but you can also use it to do overall descriptions of the rock. In short, exactly the same things that we can use the, the physical microscope for. And this is key because polarizing microscopes are expensive and they're used by a lot of students, so lab time is at a premium. And so here we see that at UCD, also at Trinity in fact, we use the virtual microscope to introduce students to um, the petrological microscope, to prepare for practicals, also to revisit practicals after they've received their grades, and to revise for exams. And this allows us to use the physical lab time in the most efficient manner possible. And we'd very much like to, to begin to further integrate the virtual microscope with field, hand specimen, geochemical data to provide a wider context for the sorts of parameters that control the mineralogy and petrology of um, rocks. Okay, so the feedback has been very good. Uh, instructors like the virtual microscope because it allows the students to prepare ahead of time and that allows us to use our time more effectively. At Trinity, we've been, this is now our fourth year of using the virtual microscope, and we've seen a definite improvement in our continuous assessment and our examination results. And we also find that the students are more engaged. Um, the students like the virtual microscope because they have unlimited access to the samples. They can revisit the samples after they've received their, their grades, and they also very much like that they can use it at home on the sofa. Um, which is where most of our use seems to be. Um, we found that the virtual microscope encourages discussion, peer-to-peer -peer and peer-to-teacher discussion, both in tutorials, in class, and online. And so, so overall, we've had a very positive effect. The students are more motivated, um, they're more confident with their petrology. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. 
So um, just in consideration then of the national impact and the evaluation, uh, certainly in terms of the impact as we um, um, have, uh, I suppose, observed it up until now, um, certainly through the project we've had contributions from each of the partners in uh, the, the universities in Ireland. And I think even that sense of ownership or sense of contribution makes everyone I say, well, I've given in a little bit, I'll take something out of it. Um, so that certainly helped in a way. Um, the, in terms of the impact, it has allowed the what was a, a, let's say a smaller library, which was held by uh, Trinity, uh, in, which is part of the, the larger virtual microscope library, to be uh, expanded. Um, and we are expanding it with the best quality samples. So it's you know improving this library. It's out there for not just students in Ireland, for anybody around the world. Um, so that, I guess, is one of the international impacts of it. From a teaching and teacher's point of view, um, this is introducing teachers um, who may not have previously used this kind of a technology to, um, well, I suppose, uh, a new approach in delivering what would be traditional uh, teaching um, methods and material, uh, where previously we would use physical microscopes. Now we're beginning to uh, encourage and give teachers resources to bring technology-enhanced learning into their uh, programs. Um, it allows teachers to develop new teaching strategies. In other words, there's a vast library of resources there. We're also through the development of these uh, online assessments. It's giving teachers a little bit of, um, I suppose, the resources to apply their own specific pro um, uh, exercises uh, and to use the templates that we've developed ourselves. Um, and it also facilitates student assessment, we regard it um, kind of equally, because traditionally you may have 20, 30, 40 students in a, in a room, each with microscopes. Some may have very, very good slides, some may not, but everyone gets the same question. So in this way, it's very, very democratic and a lot fairer. And it also has great opportunities for distance learning, and certainly Simon here from the Open University uh, would uh, know about that. In terms of learning and learners, um, from observations of students in classes, we've, you know, there's been just a, an explosive improvement in efficiency and effectiveness. I mean, the setup of a lab with 40 or 50 microscopes is now where we can move on from that and save time and resources. Uh, students have their laptops. We're teaching them in a tool that they can take away from the lab and, as Emma was saying, look at on the couch or wherever else. There's definitely a recognizable improvement in student confidence. And I know myself from um, pre-millennium uh, days of looking down microscopes, it's a little bit like sitting beside somebody and pointing at the stars and saying, can you see that star there? No, the one beside it. That's the one I'm talking about. It can be a little bit um, vague. Whereas on a screen, you can be looking at what somebody else is looking at beside you. That also encourages peer to group learning. I mean, it encourages students to sit and discuss what they see themselves. It allows them to play being a scientist. Great. Um, and I guess just to, to, to move on to the, the discourse and spreading the word, I mean, just a list of a number of the um, uh, conferences that we have presented this at, um, both here in Ireland and internationally, and some of them uh, which will follow on from the determination of the project uh, in summer. So, I believe with that. so um, just to follow on and just to, to think back to one of the main reasons why we wanted to do this project was to address this resource issue, not having enough material for all the to cater for all the, the, the students that we have. So in thinking about how we uh, evaluate the, the project and how, how it's having an impact on the students, we can see what we've eliminated and then in turn enhanced. So what we have eliminated, and the guides have touched on these already, is um, <clears throat> material and facility restrictions. So there's no restrictions. The students have non-restricted access to samples at home, like the guys were saying. Uh, material loss and damage, the, the virtual slides are indestructible. Um, some students do struggle looking down the microscope with um, conditions like photophobia, so that's at least uh, reduced. And ambiguity, um, what I mean there is um, being clear on what we want the students to see, so any, uh, any um, uncertainty within them is at least reduced. So then what we've enhanced is efficiency and effectiveness, ease of delivery, uh, the opportunities for distance learning, uh, enhanced student enthusiasm, student confidence in peer group learning, and consistency and accessibility. So that's what we've enhanced. So to quickly go through um, what we're observing across each of the partners, so I've spent some time 
asking them what, what they're observing, what, what are the main impacts this, this project is having. So the main ones are increased student engagement and student um, performance enhancement. Okay, We can quickly identify the students who are struggling and students can access the material before and after class times and the students can use the image quality to build their own study guides. And it's the two last points there that are important because it kind of gives you an idea that there's a transformation in teaching and learning and assessment. And to, to, to draw on this idea of assessment of learning changing to assessment for learning. And what I mean by that, and to give you examples, up on the board you can see there's two examples um, of practical material. The one on the left is the traditional way that we would uh, perform a, a petrology practical. So the student looks down in the microscope, identifies the mineral, <coughs> makes a sketch, uh, submits the practical and receives the grade. Okay, and then on the right then is an example of a practical using the virtual microscope. Now you can see the student can ac accurately identify the minerals and then they can use that and pull the images from the virtual microscope to, um, to begin to build their own study guides and to use that um, in the future for further revision. So this idea of not just assessment of learning but assessment for learning, they can continually use this uh, later, down the, later down the line. And just to quickly go through, to give you a measurement of the impact, you know, we are in the implementation phase of the project, so we are currently using the virtual microscope in the courses across the partner universities. So I, I took a group of students and asked them a couple of questions who were about a third of the way into their courses. And some of the questions I asked was, on a scale of zero to 10, do you think that the use of the virtual microscope was beneficial in your petrology course and enhance your student learning experience? Uh, an average answer of 8.65 out of 10, so that's a significantly high average. And then I asked them uh, to rank their level of agreement with some statements, and that was uh, the inclusion of the virtual microscope enhanced the teaching of the practicals. 40% uh, of students strongly agreed, 50% of students agreed, and then 10% of students were neutral. Uh, the 24-7 access is, of the virtual microscope is beneficial for my studies. 80% of students strongly agreed, 20% uh, 20 20 of students agreed. And then lastly, I have accessed or will access the virtual microscope outside of class hours for further revision and study. 80% of students agreed. 20% uh, of students, oh, excuse me, 80% of students strongly agreed, 20% of students agreed. So just to note there that there's no, um, no, none of the students were in disagreement with any of those statements. And then the last two there again, just to re reiterate that there is this transformation um, in how uh, we are teaching, learning and assessing the students, okay? So this, um, this idea of assessment of learning transitioning to assessment for learning, that they can continually use this. Um, and then just, just to show you this, um, this graph, this is pretty nice. It, it shows the users per day. It's a, uh, it's a Google metric of um, the students accessing the virtual microscope. So you can see we're in the implementation phase of the project, and you can clearly see that spike there is when the GeoLab uh, collection went live and we actually started using this within the coursework of the students. And you can see that, that it's jumping from less than 40 users per day right up to nearly 120. So that just reflects the impact this is having now that we're moving into the implementation phase of the project. And I might just pass it over to Pat now just to wrap it up with the sustainability. I, I appreciate we're, we're, we're over time. Look, the sustainability, the key point I want to get across here is already embedded in a large number of modules. So that to me is uh, going forward. Uh, as a colleague of mine said to me the other day, we're not going back on this. This is definitely the way forward. In terms of looking to the future and, and the type of things we want to do, as geologists, we were um, obsessed with, with scale and scale uh, variation. Going from, we we're really doing well here with the microscopic and to some degree the mesoscopic, but what we'd like to do is take this virtual slash digital approach and move it upscale to outcrop scale, mesoscopic scale, and right up to uh, remotely sensed uh, megascopic scale. So this is something that we're thinking about as a group, and particularly Julian and I are thinking about that in terms of field courses and embedding these type of digital resources into field activity. Okay, I'll, I'll just call it that.